All right, everyone, and hello, and welcome to our next entry in the Monster Hunter 20th Anniversary Countdown, number 209, Crimson Kuropeko. First appearance in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. We're going to be playing him in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate on the Wii U. Uh, you know, I just, I, I like showing off the g rank versions in case they get a little bit of a change from the high rank versions. Usually not dramatically different moves, but sometimes some different AI, which we'll see relatively soon with Volbidon. Amazing looking set. I mean, have we ever had a set that has looked as good as Crimson Kuropeko? I don't know. I mean, it just... Th this is the G-Rank set, of course. It transcends pretty much everything. I mean, it's, it's kind of like the fusion between like the old Hunter style and... Getting a little bit more wacky with it. Creative third gen style. Fourth gen style is we added capes to everything. Armor set, really though, not too much to write home about. Uh, wide range, windproof. A little bit of critical eye. Negative sleep isn't that good. Uh, weapons aren't that good. Unfortunately, uh, in 3U, it's not like they really went out of their way to majorly scale everything. Um... Little, little bit unfortunate. Abyssal Chris pretty much just beats everything. Uh, I did deco in Fast Charge. We're going to be using a Great Sword on this one. So I'm going to be using the Jade Baroth Great Sword. Um, you'll see with this hit zones in a second. You know, it's kind of worth it. Not like Elemental Great Sword is the best thing in the world, but... You know, he takes really, really good ice on his head and on his Volt Stones. And his Volt Stones actually don't take a lot of cutting damage. So, in a way, this will kind of help break those a little bit earlier. It'll make certain aspects of the fight quite a bit easier. As for statuses, um, you know, poison, that's an okay amount of damage, but 90 seconds is an incredibly long time to wait for it to cycle. Sleep will proc pretty quickly, though, and that could be nice as an alternative to breaking the Volt Stone with bombs. So, if you're in a group, maybe one person with sleep would be nice to help break the arms as well as to break the head. Pair and KO are both fine, although KO, I think you're going to have a generally difficult time hitting the head with the hammer. There are certain times where he'll kind of like lower his head a little bit and you can either uppercut it or you can super pound it. In general though, I think one of the most captivating things about Kuropeko is his ability to summon other monsters. If I were to say there's like one keystone ability of his, I mean, it's that. You know, there's always that one meme about Kuropeko getting ready to summon Devil Joe. It's always kind of fun being in a quest and being like, man, I wonder, I wonder what one it's going to be this time. Other than that, you know, normal Kuropeko gets the little flame, the flint stones, which will set you on fire. Crimson Kuropeko gets bolt stones, I think they're called. We just looked at it. He can use those to shock you a little bit, or he could use them to occasionally perform a flash. So he's mad now. He does actually get a roar. Normal Kuropeko doesn't get a roar like that. And then this is his summon. Difficult to interrupt. You'd have to like really, really be on track to kind of interrupt that one. So he summoned a Durham Boros. You know, Dung Bombs aren't <laughs> as nearly as good in the older generations. I mean, it will work eventually. Sometimes there are skills that it will actually make Dung Bombs stronger. We don't have any of them equipped. Wouldn't necessarily be a bad idea, though. So otherwise, he's got his songs that he'll play occasionally as well. Look at that. Monsters will hurt each other. Sometimes Kuropeko will summon up a, a Devil Joe and um, get himself destroyed. So yeah, if you can hit him while he's singing, you can actually steal his song. He always does this funny little, like, running away animation. I kind of love it. So at this point, I have broken his two Volt Stones just by hitting them. So that makes his one ability where he's going to try and flash you take like an incredibly long amount of time. So it either gives you plenty of time to get out of the way or it gives you plenty of time to actually try and do damage on him. So funny thing, Iron Skin is on this set. It does nothing for his throw up ability, which 
doesn't give you defense down. It gives you resistance down. I, I just... <laughs> Why? Why doesn't it just cover for both? We may never know. So here I broke the beak. Breaking the beak makes... All? Almost all of his song-related abilities take twice as long. So if he's summoning, if he's uh, playing one of his songs or something else, it takes takes twice as long. It might have this bizarre additional effect, which we're going to see in just a moment here. So he's got a sleep song. Now put us both to sleep. Funny thing is on the set, it had double sleep as a negative armor skill. And I didn't think to deco it out because I kind of forgot that he would sleep you. <laughs> but if you had sleep resistance, I mean, that's a good opportunity to get a decent hit off while he's sleeping. Not that you would use his armor set and then try to go all the way to sleep resistance, but you, you know what I mean. Otherwise, in general, you know, you're kind of hoping to get lucky and... You know, when he's in the air, you know, you can get a number of dunks off on him. Sword weapons, of course, are going to be better at it than others. You know, Greatsword has its own natural advantage of it's going to deal so much damage on pretty much anything. But again, I am I am continually reminded in 3U of just how chunky they make the monsters. I don't... I don't know why they did that. It's possible they did a lot of their playtest and balancing with Blast in mind. Not saying that Blast was necessarily the best possible element or status to use on Crimson Kuropeko, but it's stacked up a lot. And it always generally makes the quests feel a lot shorter. I don't know. It was a little bit easier to connect and play with other people over the internet as well, so that could have been part of it. Okay, Crimson Kuropeko Shard. A strong scale concealed by Crimson Plumage. Grown to full maturity over many years. Crimson Kuropeko Wing, the large wing of a Crimson Kuropeko. Noble women are drawn to its eye-popping red color. Wonderful beak, an oddly shaped beak. It's somehow quite lovely. High Voltstone, the organ a Crimson Kuropeko uses to generate electricity. Beware its high voltage output. Okay, so that's it for Crimson Kuropeko. Beautiful armor, but... Generally, bad weapons and bad equipment, unfortunately. It is a fun fight. It is fun. But it's unfortunate that there's not too, too much redeemable outside of full-on fashion hunting. Which, I mean, hey! I'd love to see it. I'd love to see a full room of people running in a, around in the Kuropeko armor. Okay, up next, number 207, Snow Baron Lagambi. In a lot of ways, similar to Red Helm, but you'll have to wait and see it soon. Thank you for watching. I love you. Goodbye.